What's up guys? What we're looking at here is a temperature controlled propane burner that I recently built for a customer who needed a tar heater. We're now going to simulate a cool off scenario where we have dropped below the set value. I think you get the point. So the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to adjust the temperature settings. Hey, what's up fellas? Doing a quick little video here for Joe on this temperature controlled propane burner. And essentially to turn this thing on now, so that you don't you gotta worry about it firing up just because you hooked the battery up. We're just gonna press this button in. And you can hear the valve is open. So I'm gonna kind of go over some details about this thing. What we have here on the top is the process value. That means that this thermocouple is registering 58 degrees in here. And I currently have the set value at 88 degrees. So in Joe's case, he wants this thing to run around 300 degrees Fahrenheit for the tar. So I'm gonna show you how you do that, but first I'm gonna turn it off with the temperature. And to do that, we're just gonna hit this button here. This green button allows us to adjust the set value. So we're gonna take that down to 45. We're gonna hit that button again. And as you can hear, this thing has shut off because the set value is now currently below the process value. So let's say you decided that you wanted it set at 250 degrees. We would then hit this green button and I'm gonna go ahead and hold it till it's right around 250 degrees. And we again hit the green set button and that has kicked on the normally closed solenoid and the spark is now on again. So that's how you adjust the temperature. Let's say you're done heating tar for the moment. So when you're done for the day or you just want to shut it down for whatever reason, you're just going to hit this button and that turns it off. But we're still connected to the power source. This power source is simulating a 12 volt power supply or a 13.8 volt power supply from a, a truck or a trailer, you can hook this up to the, the lights on a trailer and pull power from that. As long as the vehicle is running, you shouldn't run it down. It doesn't pull a whole lot of current. This particular rig is set up to run on 12 volts, but the hardware inside is 120 volts. And that is why we have this inverter here, but it's not a full sine wave inverter but it's, it is enough to run this thing without any problem. So, or a pure sine wave inverter. This inverter also has a switch on it. If you're to accidentally bump this switch, just remember O does not stand for on. I don't know why they do this. The line is actually on. This is now in the on position. And as far as the on off button goes, when the button is sticking out, it is off. And when you push it in, it's on. So whatever you do, do not put the thermal couple at the top of the tank. I know that seems so stupid to tell you that. I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence, but we got to remember our tar level is going to be dropping as we're using tar. So I recommend we put that thermal couple in between the heat exchange tube right here at the lowest level possible so that as that tar level's dropping, we're not burning up tar because we could probably get that tar four or 500 degrees before that air got that hot. Um, maybe not, but just in case, I feel like we would be burning up some tar if we had that thermal couple up here. Uh, don't let that concept of heat rises mess with you. You just might have to monitor the tank temp some other way to start. You could put one up here to test so that you know, say if this is at 280, then this up here is at like 400, then you would know to appropriately adjust the set value to accommodate these upper temperatures so that might be one good reason to have two thermal couples one up top one up bottom this one would just be a readout and this one here would control whether or not to turn the burner on or off